एवरी वन वेलकम टू द कंप्यूटर क्लास टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू चैप्टर टू इन कोडिंग्स द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ माई टूडेज टॉपिक आर यू विल लर्न फ्लोटिंग पॉइंट रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ अ नंबर नॉर्मलाइजिंग फ्लोटिंग पॉइंट डेटा ऑपरेशंस ऑन बाइंड्री नंबर्स अरेथमेटिक Floating point arithmetic. Students, please open your book at page number sixty-six. Floating point representation of a number. A number having a decimal point that divides the number into integer and fractional part is called floating point number. For example, thirty-two point seven six. Here. Thirty-two is an integer, and point seven six is a fractional part. Twenty-five point eight four. Here, twenty-five is an integer, and eighty-four is a fractional part. A floating point number can be written in many forms. Let us consider an example. Suppose I am having a number for. Two point five seven six, with the base ten. It means it is a decimal number. Now, how can I write it? First way, I will shift this decimal point towards left side. So, I will write point four two five seven six. Into ten raised to power two. As we have shifted the decimal points toward left side, two digits. That's why we have written raised to power two. And when you are going to shift the decimal towards left, the exponent should always be positive. Now, in the second example. Forty-two point five seven six. I'm going to shift the decimal point towards right two digits, so it becomes forty-two five seven point six into ten raised to power minus two. Why minus two? Because we have shifted the decimal point towards right side, and this. Number is a decimal number having base ten, so we have used ten raised to power minus two. Now, what if I have to remove the decimal point from the number forty two point five seven six? So I will shift this decimal point three digits towards right. So my number becomes forty two thousand five hundred seventy six. Multiply ten raised to power minus three, because decimal number has the base ten, and its exponent is minus three. So students, we can write a floating point number in the form m multiply b raised to power e, where M is a mantissa, B is the base, and E is an exponent. Now, students, come to your book on page number sixty-six. In general, a floating point number can be written as m into b raised to power e, where m is the mantissa, B is the base of the number system, and E is the exponent. Now, when the numbers mantissa is multiplied with b raised to power e, we have to consider these three observations. If e is greater than zero, then in the result the point moves towards right. If e is less than zero, the point moves towards left. And if e is equals to zero, The position of the point remains unchanged. Students, 
similarly we can write a fractional number with any base in different forms for example i am having a number with the octal base 234.67 now i am going to shift a decimal point towards right side and it is one digit shift so my answer will be 2346.7 into 8 raised to power minus 1 why because 8 is the base and minus 1 is the exponent and it is in the form m into b raised to power e now let's consider in the example with the same base 8 now i am going to shift this decimal point towards left with the three digit shift so my answer will be 0.23467 multiplied by 8 raised to power 3 here e will be the exponent as we have shifted the decimal point towards left in this way we can also have the variance of hexadecimal floating point numbers and binary floating point numbers next topic is normalizing floating point data a floating point data is normalized by moving the floating point in such a manner that there is always a single non zero digit in the integer part and rest are in decimal part with the product of base raised to power exponent let us understand it with the help of an example here i am having a binary number 1001.101 base 2 now according to the rule i am going to shift the decimal point with the condition that there is always a single non zero digit in integer part so i have shifted the decimal point 3 points to the left so my answer is 1.001101 multiply what is the base over here 2 raised to power 3 as the decimal point is shifted towards the left Let us consider another example: nine eight seven three two point zero zero six five base ten. Now again, what I am going to do? I am going to shift this decimal point towards left after nine. So my decimal point is over here. Now the number becomes nine point eight seven three. Two zero zero six five. In how many digits are shifted towards left? Yes, decimal point is four. So ten raised to power four. Similarly, the another example: zero point zero zero five zero six eight four zero zero one with the base ten. Now, my number is. this and i am going to shift this decimal point towards right why because i want a single non zero digit before the decimal so my answer is 5.068400 into 10 raised to power minus 3 Why minus three? Because I have shifted the decimal point towards right three digits. Students, while doing normalization, two cases can occur depending on the size of the exponent, namely overflow and underflow. Overflow. If your exponent is too large to be represented in the exponent field, and underflow. means your exponent is too small to be represented in the exponent field so these are the two cases overflow and underflow our next topic is operations on binary numbers we are going to do floating point arithmetic 
it will include your all arithmetic operations like addition subtraction multiplication and division first is floating point addition now to add two floating point values they have to be aligned so that they have the same exponent now let's understand what the word aligned means here i have taken an example let's suppose my first number is 3.24 into 10 raised to power 2 my second number is 308.26 Now, as you can see here, we are having no base raised to power exponent, and here b raised to power e is ten raised to power two. So now we are going to align both these numbers. Means we are going to make them in the form of m multiply b raised to power e. Where b raised to power e must be same, so I will write three point zero eight two six into ten raised to power two because I have shifted the decimal point towards there. So here it is, ten raised to power two. Now as my both the fractional part becomes same. so i can add these two numbers come back to your books on page 67 after addition the sum may need to be normalized potential errors include overflow underflow and in exact results potential means the errors that are not sure means probable errors now let us consider an example on the next page 2.34 into 10 raised to power 3 plus 0.88 into 10 raised to power 3 now as these both numbers have same b raised to power e that is 10 raised to power 3 so we are not going to align these numbers we will simply write 10 raised to power 3 as it is and add 3.2 Two two is the answer. Now we will not normalize it as it is already normalized. Students, what is normalization? Yes, having one non-zero digit before the decimal point. Now in the second example, six point two two into ten raised to power eight plus three point nine three into ten raised to power eight. Now I will write b raised to power e in the same manner. Then after adding these two numbers, I got ten point one five. Now students, as I told you earlier, you have to normalize the addition. So after normalization, my answer is one point zero one five into ten raised to power nine. Next topic is floating point subtraction. The rules for floating point subtraction are also same. So let us do it with an example. We are going to subtract two point three four into ten raised to power three minus zero point eight eight into ten raised to power three. So this b raised to power e will be same. And after subtraction, I got one point four six. So my answer is one point four six into ten raised to power three. Next topic is floating point multiplication. Now, as you do in mathematics, that floating point do not require realignment. You all know when the base is same, then the parts are added. Similarly here also when the base is same we are going to add the parts it means in multiplication there is no need of realignment for example i am having a number 2 into 10 raised to power 3 and my second number is 4 into 10 raised to power 2 as b is same that is 10 so we will add the parts And here we will multiply four, multiply two. That is eight. 
So my answer is 8 into 10 raised to power 5. Let us see the steps from page number 68, floating point multiplication. Multiplying floating point values do not require realignment. Realignment leads to the loss of significance, means our result may not be accurate. After multiplication, the product may need to be normalized. Potential errors include overflow, underflow and inexact results. Consider an example 2.4 into 10 raised to power minus 3 multiply 6.3 into 10 raised to power 2. So my answer is 15.12 multiply 10 raised to power minus 3 plus 2. Why minus 3 plus 2? Because parts are added if the base is same. Now we are going to normalize this. So my answer is 15.12 into 10 raised to power minus 1. Now students, I will shift this decimal point after 1 as to normalize my answer. So my answer becomes 1.512 into 10 raised to power 0. Why 0? Because I have shifted the decimal point towards left and it is a shift of 1 digit. So here I will add plus 1. So minus 1 plus 1 is 0. So my answer is 10 raised to power 0. And anything raised to power 0 is equal to 1. So my final answer is 1.512. Next topic is floating point division. Dividing the floating point values do not require realignment. After division, the quotient may need to be normalized. There is no remainder. Let us do with an example 1.86 into 10 raised to power 17 divided by 7.44 into 10 raised to power 5. Now, as in the reason, when the base is same, you are going to subtract the parts. So, when I divide 1.86 by 7.44, my answer is 0 0.25 into 10 raised to power 8. Here, we have taken the decimal point significance. Now, we will not shift this point towards the left side. Why? Because we have to normalize our Data. And our result is only normalized when we have one digit before the decimal point and that digit must be a non-zero digit. So my answer is 2.5 into 10 raised to power 11. So students, today you have learned floating point representation of a number, normalizing floating point data, and floating point arithmetic. Do practice the related examples from page number 66 to 69. Thank you.